All right. This is a continuation of what I was doing in class. So thanks to the fire alarm, I didn't get to finish my lecture. So I decided to post the rest of it online. So I hope you enjoy. Now what we were talking about before we were so rudely interrupted is a example involving a uh, OCH3, a methoxy group. This is called 2-nitro-anisole. So if I have an OCH3 on an aromatic ring, it's called anisole. And I've got a nitro in the ortho position to the OCH3. And I want to illustrate how to predict what the uh, NMR spectra is going to look like, including uh, coupling, uh, coupling uh, splitting, and the uh, chemical shift of these compound, the hydrogens on this particular compound. All right. Now, before we go ahead and look at the hydrogens and see what they're doing, First, we have to look at the chemical shift and see what the groups attached to the aromatic ring are doing. Now, over here, I've got the OCH3. And because this has a lone pair of electrons, it's going to be electron donating to the aromatic ring. So the oxygen donates into that ring. And we're going to see increased electron density here, denoted by the negative charge, in the ortho position. We're also going to see increased electron density down here in the para position. Okay. Now, because I see elect increased electron density there, I'm going to see these things become shielded. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put squares around the things that are shielded and circles around the things that are deshielded. Okay? So, if I look over here, I've got this thing in the ortho position. Notice that the negative charge is in the ortho position to the OCH3, and the para group is going to be in the ortho position as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to label these things. I'm going to call this A, B, C, and D here. Okay? So I look at those hydrogens, and that's what I see. For this one, in the ortho and para positions, I see positive charges, which means it's lost electron density. It is no longer shielded uh, in the NMR. So because I've lost electron density here, what I expect to see is things in the ortho and para positions to be deshielded. All right, so now I'm going to look at an NMR. And I've got something from 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8 down here. Okay, and where I expect to see these things. So uh, we'll start up here. We'll start around around 8. What I expect to see on 8 is hydrogen A. That's the one that was up here. Hydrogen A, okay. And hydrogen A, I'd expect to see in this position. Hydrogen C, because it's para, it's a little further away from the NO2. Usually there's up here just a little bit further upfield than their other counterpart. And down here on 7, I'm going to expect to see first B in this position. And then I'm going to see D a little bit further. Because this is closer to the ortho, I expect it to be a little further um, upfield. All right? Now, the coupling constants I expect to see, I'm going to write in here. So AA, this guy, only has an ortho and a metacoupling. So what I expect to see for this one is a big coupling and a little coupling. For C here, I've got two orthos and a meta, so I expect to see two big couplings and a little meta coupling. For B, same thing, big D, big D, little d. And for D, I expect to see that kind of coupling pattern. Now I also expect to see, over here in the triangle, I expect to see the CH3 and I expect to see the CH3 somewhere between 3.5 and 4. So I'm going to put the CH3 right here. And that's going to be a singlet because there's nothing else nearby to couple it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out the actual uh, um, NMR of this thing. And I'm going to show you what it looks like. And um, hopefully our prediction is going to be somewhat accurate. Okay? All right, now let's compare the spectrum that we have here of 2 nitro anisole to the spectrum that we predicted up here. Now first, let's start down here. 
I said right around this region, we'll expect to see the OCH3. And right here, just about 3.95, we see a large singlet that integrates. I don't know if you can see the integration here. But the integration here shows up about three times the size of any of these integrations. And that's what I'm talking about. So this is a one to three ratio, which is pretty much one hydrogen to three over here. Okay? So this is where we expect to see the OCH3. Now we come down to this region, and we look, and we see what looks like a very thin doublet right here, um, almost a singlet that we see down here, right about 7.8. That was the first one that I predicted, and that was the A peak down in this region, okay? So that one is the ortho next to the nitro group. To pair it to the nitro group, I see a doublet, doublet, a doublet. So it kind of looks like a triplet here based on that effect. So what I see from that is this coupling right here for C shows up right in that region, okay? The one that's ortho to the OCH3, the hydrogen next to the OCH3 in the ortho position, shows up here. We expected to see a doublet of doublets, and that's pretty much what we see right there. And a doublet of double of doublets kind of looks like a triplet shows up right in that region as well. These two peaks are showing up right on top of each other, and as a result, if you look at them, unless you have really good resolution, it's hard to see exactly what they are. Okay, But this is pretty much what we predicted using this NMR. And that's what we're doing here. That's what I'm trying to show you. Is I'm just trying to show you that you can predict kind of what you see if you know what your structure is. And the NMR should follow along with what it is. And there shouldn't be any real surprises. Okay? All right. Now, so far, we've gone through 13.1 through 13.2. We've covered a lot of different things with Proton NMR. One of the last few things that I'm going to cover with Proton NMR is something called confirmations. Now you've seen this before, okay? Generally you've seen this is that when you have a cyclohexane, the cyclohexane interconverts into one share form to another. And if I have something that's in the axial position up here, like a CH3, that interconverts to go to the equatorial position, okay? These are two different conformations. Now if the temperature changes it's going to prefer one conformation over another. How about room temperature here? You're going to have a, a larger percentage of the equatorial position because it's more stable. All right. Now, if I'm going to try to bias this so that it's more of this particular compound, what I can do is lower the temperature. And what I'm going to see is more of this compound because as I lower the temperature, it doesn't interconvert as much. There's not as much energy allowing this thing to pop up into the axial position. If I increase the temperature, I get closer to a 50-50 mixture. Okay? Now, if I've got something like a nitrogen here, it's connected to an R group, that's got an H and a CH3 here. Actually, let me change this to a wedge and a dash to CH3. Okay? The nitrogen here is busy interconverting by popping into two different conformations. Because the lone pair above the nitrogen in this P is in an sp orbital, what it does is it goes into a P shape for the electrons, which turns this into a planar structure, and then it pops over into this position. Now normally, at room temperature, you're going to see these rapidly convert, and you're going to see one peak. But if you're not sure if that's a nitrogen or not, and you want to see the peaks resolve, so here's our, here's our peak at room temperature. As I lower the temperature, what I'm going to see is that the peak is going to start dividing into the two different CH3 groups, depending upon their spatial location. And as the temperature gets colder, I'm going to see the two peaks start to resolve. Okay? 
And this is what NMR can do. It can lower its internal temperature and separate these two based on their conformations. So that makes NMR a little bit useful in that you can see either two different peaks. And if you see this, you can raise the temperature to make them become one if you think it's their conformations. If they don't merge together, they're not conformations. Or if I've got one peak and I think that there's two conformations in there, I can lower the temperature to see if they resolve. If that's the case, it proves that I do have two different conformations of that particular compound.